So let's go. We're gonna gr we're gonna solve equations, exponential and logarithmic. But I think we're only gonna get through the exponential at this moment. Okay. So if you look at the steps, shh, if you're a common person that just follows the steps, this is enough to tell you what to do next. Step one: rewrite the equation using a common base. Remember, exponentials have base, like uh, 2 to the x and 5 to the x minus 2. Those bases aren't the same. So somehow we would want to find a common base that they can be. Now, maybe this one's kind of impossible to do without doing the change of base formula. That's a whole other kind of problem. Use your knowledge, your previous knowledge of the properties of exponents. For instance, when you're multiplying like bases, you add the exponents. When you're dividing like bases, you subtract the exponents. When you have an, an exponent with an exponent, you multiply the exponents. Those are those things that we already know, hopefully. Once you use your properties, you try simplifying both sides of the equation. Because ideally what you want to make is you want to make an equation like this. You want the base, one base, equal to another one. And it's the same base. So you got to simplify everything to just one exponential base. Okay? And they're calling this, ladies, the one-to-one -one property. One-to-one -one means this. If these two are equal, and of, co of, of course the B equals the B, then what else has to be equal? Yes, the exponents have to be equal. If the bases are equal, and this thing is equal, then I'll know that the exponent X has to equal the exponent Y. Now the first couple aren't so bad. Oh, and by the way, once you set this up, then you need to solve the equation. We usually, we usually solve for x, okay? Number one, I don't have to do step one because I already have a common base. What is my common base? And is it one of them on each side? Yes. Then all you got to do is use the one-to-one -one property. What do you know is true? I haven't heard it. Yes, the 3 equals to 3. Is that what you want me to write down? Will that be very helpful? No. No. What do I write down? Somebody started it. 2x minus 9. What about it? Is equal to 7. There's your x equals to y. Now we solve this for x. Do I have to hold your hand how to solve this? Really? This is pre-cal. You guys, you guys don't have, you know, I told you that I'm going to be requiring to see some steps on your papers. Don't turn in just answers anymore. I'm, the highest you can get is a 50. But, but here, there are people who could do this in their head. You're going to add 9 to both sides, aren't you? Yes. What does that make the 7? And then don't we have to get rid of that too by uh, dividing by it? So if, if that would be what? Eight. So for those that uh, just got lost, plus nine, plus nine, cancel. 2x equals to 16 divided by 2 divided by 2. x is 8. There's your answer. Wasn't bad. But trust me, by the time we get to the end of this page, even I will be sweating bullets, okay? By the way, these problems are set one. They all have a common base. So they're, they're designed to be easy on this set. Okay. All right. I know. Number two, is there one common base? E. So what becomes true? Tell me what I write out. 4W minus 1 has to be equal to? 5 minus 2w. Now, I know we're starting to get harder at solving the equation, so 
Even I sometimes want to talk about the two steps that I have to do to simplify. I definitely got to get all the W's on one side. So you decide which ones are moving. How does it move? But how? What's the operation? No, I can't, I can't put those together. How do I move the 2W? Which, by the way, is negative 2W. How do I move it? Oh, I add. So I'm going to go add 2W. That goes away. Add 2W to the four W's, right? Now, there are people in here who could have done that without showing that work. They could have just wrote 6W. They might even know what it's going to be equal to without me doing the next step. Can anybody know? Five, six, nine, Which is it? Five or six? Five, five. Well, what happened to the minus one? Oh, then, then, oh, then you better write it then. If you didn't know, you better write it down. So what, what happens to the minus one? Oh, I would add. And some of you could have done that in your head. Six W is six. So what's W? One. Ryan, wake up. Wake up. We just did two problems. And then you're going to want to give me some excuse. Now look at number three. Number three is different. They did elevate it a little bit. The common base is still there. What's the common base? But I need to have... I need to have only one five with something equals to one five with something. No, there's no dividing to do this. So, so look at these two. These are common bases being multiplied. What's the rule if I want to keep the five? No. We're only looking at this side. We add the what? The two bases. No, you don't. I just mentioned this before we started. When we multiply like bases, we must add the exponents. So write C minus 1 plus, and since I'm adding, I don't need to put it in parentheses, 3C plus 2 must be equal to what? 5 to the... plus 16. All right. So I think I can get rid of this prep right here. I was just telling you I need I needed this to happen and it did. So now what does the one to one property say that I can write down right now? No, I don't need to write down a five. What's true if the fives are equal? Tell me about all of this and all of this. Oh, then let's write it down. C minus 1 plus the 3C plus 2 has to be equal to the 7C plus the 16. So I'm not saying this is easy. You got a lot of simplifying. So what simplifies? What goes together on the left? The 3C and the what? How much is that? All right, nice, 4C. What else cancels together or puts together? What do those become? Positive? Positive 1. Ladies, stop talking. I guarantee I can walk back there and not see all of this done. Unless you are so good at being able to talk and not pay attention. So, now that this is here, we still got to do the same thing we did before. I got to combine the C's on one side. Transfer it over. How? What about the 16 and the 1? Come on, this is Algebra 1. Nobody gave me a step. Maybe I ought to draw the random numbers. Say it again. Move the 1. How? I heard a female voice back there somewhere, minus one. 
No, it was over there. It was not. I'm old, but not that old. So that leaves me 4C equals to 7C plus 15. Don't forget to use plus 15. Older than dirt. I wish. Boy, to be 54 again. You're making me dream. All right, come on, I got to get, keep going. Yeah, I got to move the 7C, so I'll subtract it from both sides. And it's kind of sad that I'm still doing all those steps because that's what I do in Algebra 2. You guys are advanced students now. We should be able to go to each line without even showing these things because it should be intuitive now. So that gives me a negative 3C equals to 15. All right. In one more step, we have the answer. What's the final answer? Okay. Is it, are you sure it's negative? It's, it's a positive number divided by, that's positive, divided by a negative. It will be a negative 5. Okay. Yes. You got this all down? You understand it? So you can do the next one for me? Maybe? All right, go ahead, go. Just putting you on the spot, that's all. All right, look at all those bases that are common. It's raining base 8, isn't it? Yes. But do you think it's any different than 3? No. I mean, let's be honest here. What am I going to do with these, this exponent and this exponent? Hello? What do you do when you multiply like bases? You add the exponents. And I heard somebody, I wish I knew it was. It was you again? I'm so happy you're here. Thank you. So what I might write, I might, I might skip uh, writing the base 8. I might go right now to writing uh, k, oh, right, k squared. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to give you a warning. Write small. I just remembered. k squared plus k plus... The 2K minus 9. You listening? Yes, sir. Has to be equal to what's happening over here. What's being added together? 4K. Okay. 4K plus 11. So I have a feeling we're looking at a quadratic equation because I see a K squared. And I see K's here, I see K's here, and I see K's here. When you have a K squared and K's, you need everything on one side. I can move the 4K over. But before I do that, tell me about this K and this 2K. Yeah, I can put those together right now, can I? How many is that? So let me say k squared plus 3k. And if you're moving the 4k, wouldn't that be a minus 4k? And then don't I still have a minus 9 still equal to 11? Yeah. Oh, wait, I got to get rid of the 11. And I got to combine these k's. You can't get rid of the 9. You need everything on one side. When it's a quadratic... When it's a quadratic equation, you have to get the whole thing equal to zero. That's the rules of solving a quadratic. And I gave you heads up. I said that looks quadratic because you have k squares and k's. So what does 3k minus 4k come out to? So k squared minus 1k or k. Instead of minus 9, what will I write? Minus a 20. Now, I will pause while you look at it because in case somebody has a question on how we did these magic numbers. You're good with it? Okay. 
So now, what about it? I took minus 11. I, took, I went to the 11 and I went minus 11, minus 11. That canceled to the zero. Negative 9 minus 11 is a negative 20. Okay, no problem. So now this is a quadratic equation with three terms. And you remember quadratic. Remember, it's ax squared plus bx plus c equal to zero. To solve this, you have to use the F word, factor. Remember? When you factor, you find two binomials multiplied together equals to zero. So in this case, I'm going to set it up for you because I know, I know you're advanced students. Two binomials set equal to zero. Since this is a k squared, this has to be k and this has to be a k. All I need is two numbers that multiply to get a negative 20 and adds up to a negative 1. Multiply to a negative 20, adds up to a negative 1. Can you think of two numbers that multiply to be a 20? One has to be negative, one has to be positive. That's the only way you're going to get a negative 20. A 4 and a 5? Yes, if one of those is negative. Which one must be negative? Why the five? Because if I'm looking for negative, then the biggest one has to get the negative. So I'm going to put the five right here and the four right here. I think that will work. If you foiled it out, I think it will work. That means... K minus 5 can be 0. K plus 4 can be 0. You remember this in Algebra 2? Or at the beginning of the year when you were supposed to be reviewing it on Canvas when I was not here? I, I didn't get here till 9-11. It was my first official day. I actually came a couple weeks before as a substitute, remember? Oh, I wasn't here for the first month. Well, I, I don't have any recollection. So, Ryan, you're asleep again? Ryan. No, you were asleep again. You have this copy down? You have this? To watch my first answer. K is what? K to the fifth power. Somebody help me out. What's the first answer? K is what? No, what's the answer? Five. I heard somebody. What's my second answer? No. Negative four. Did, who said that? Was that you? Okay. There you go. Now. Now, we're going to pump it up on steroids just a little bit. We do not have a common base. So you need to look at this carefully and say to yourself, can the 9 become an 81? Can the 81 become something with a 9 base? 9 squared. Winner, winner. Because that means I'm going to keep the 9 to the... 4y minus 26. And I'm going to turn the 81 into a 9 squared. It would have been very difficult to find a power on the 9 that makes it uh, the same thing as 9, but it's written it with a power and be an 81. It'd be hard. I'm not saying we couldn't do it, but I might not like it. All right, now this looks just like uh, number one or number two. What do I do right off the bat? I don't add. Oh, I set those two exponents equal to each other. Nice. 
And, and I'm glad that we're only looking at linear. I'm only looking at linear. It should be really easy. I'm not going to waste my time. I'm going to do the answer. I'm going to add 26 with, in my head, and I'm going to divide by 4. So I think the answer is 7. Who does not see where I came up with the 7? He did wake up before this. I added 26 to both sides. That gave me a 28. Then I divided by this 4. So I divided by 4 and I got the 7. All right. Number 6. Believe it or not, it's no harder than 5, but you need to know another property. But I'll get to it in a second. Somebody asked... No? I heard somebody say, sir. Could be at the prison we had a... Do you have any good they, stories? They called her, yes, they called her the little girl. Uh, there's a lot of stories about people seeing a little girl in this prison. And there are stories that this person uh, would appear or not appear, but things would happen, like things got knocked off the wall. Papers get thrown on the floor, Where was this and they would and will at Raymondville, and 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 so when these things happen, they would say, "Sorry, little girl." In other words, you offended her, huh? Uh, Willacy County State Jail. Yeah, there is. Yes, you keep it up. Keep, all right. So, all right. Here it goes. What's he do? So, what's his name? Dominic? Last name? Hernandez. Dominic Hernandez. Does he work day shift or? That's why I always know him. But, how long has he been there? All right, ask him if he knows Mr. Cartwright. I did. He said he didn't know. Huh? He said he didn't. He didn't know the principal's name at the school? Uh huh. Yeah. So, not all the night people know all the people, day people. So you were the principal of the whole school? Yeah. How'd it go? I loved it. Did you teach or did you just... I sometimes went in the classroom and, and helped the teacher try to put something that they could understand. I enjoyed that. So what you doing though? I got to go. Got to move on. So, would it be easier to turn the 4 into a 64 or the 64 into a base 4? No, Wyndham ISD took over. I already explained all this. Wyndham ISD. From Huntsville. Okay, guys, I can't be doing all the work. Can a 64 be written with a base 4? How? You don't divide it. You don't divide it. You don't subtract. You have to think of a four. What power would make a 64? Let's try it. What's four to the first? What's four to the second? What's four to the third? What's four to the fourth? 64. So what's this number? So it's a four to the fourth. But hold on here. Let me back up here. I need more room. It's at the bottom. Four to the four. Sixteen times four, is that not sixty-four? That's it, you don't do it that way. It may have came out, but it, you don't do you don't divide by four. No, 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 sir, sir. Four times one equals four. Four times two or four times four. Sixteen. Yes. Sixteen times four that's sixty-four. So that's three. You lost thirty-two. Sixteen times four. See, 16 times 4 is okay, hold on. 4, 4 16, 16, 16 times 4. 16 times 4 is 64. Are you sure? Then everybody's wrong. It was 3. I told you. Guys, you're going to hate this. Ryan's right. Hey, hey. Hey, 
kidding. Nobody's. So Ryan, Ryan, right? You corrected it, so you get you get a volunteer point today because you you had to step out on faith. Okay, so it's four to the. And I wasn't paying attention. I guess is equal. I I might not have caught it. Four. No, it wouldn't have worked. I might have done it wrong. Had a wrong answer. And then somebody on the internet would email me or send me a bad message. So the problem is, though, this four to the three is in the wrong place. I need it to go up. How can that four to the three go up? Change the sign of the exponent. It's the same as four to the negative three. Remember what we said. You have to know your properties of exponents. Now I have the same base. I have a 4 in the top. I have a 4 in the top. So what do I know to be true? You have the same base. So negative 3 must be equal to a squared minus 4. Now, this is a quadratic, but you are allowed to solve for a squared because there are no other a's in there. So I add 4, so that gives me a... 1 equals to a squared. Then I take the square root. So what's the square root of 1? So 1 equals to a. And you know what? I may have done it wrong in the last period. No, make them find the answer. Make them find the answer so they can get extra credit. All right, is number seven with a common base or can one of those become a common base? The, the 32 can be a base too, can't it? Do your, do your bases. Two, four, eight, 16, 32. So what's that number? Five. So two to the M minus nine equals two to the 5, but it, at the same time, it's equal to the m plus 3. Okay, new property. New property. What do we do with a 5 to a power? Good job. You multiply. You keep the 2, but when you multiply, you're going to have to distribute it twice, right? Yes or no? So... So m minus 9 must be equal to, what was it again? 5m uh, plus, plus 15. Plus 15. Why don't you stay awake more? You're very helpful. So let's finish it up real quick. Get all the m's on one side. Minus, m, minus, m. minus what? Minus m. Minus m. Minus m. Minus 15 minus 15. You're right. That all works. That gives me, uh, those go away. What's a negative 9 minus 15? Uh, it's the same thing. Uh, it's 24. Negative 24. Mm, negative, thank you. Negative 24 must be equal to, because I canceled, equal to how many M's? Uh, 4M. 4M. So what is M? Yeah, divide. What is M? Negative six. I heard it over there. Ian to the rescue. All right. You know what, guys? We're almost done. What time's the bell ring? Uh, minutes. Wow, we did this faster than the first period. Maybe. Only because I, I don't really want to do a whole lot more. Uh, is there a way to make this 12 go up? No, I don't. 1 12 is not equal to 12. So if they're not the same base, I can make it the same base. How can the 12 in the bottom go to the top? 
We just did it a second ago. No. Change the power to a what? Make this a 12 to the negative 1. But don't forget, it still is raised to the 4, is it an X? 4X plus 3, right? Times the 12 to the 3. X, I'm sorry. 12 to the X squared equals to 12 to the 2X plus 13. So uh, what do I do with this madness here? We just did it. Do it again. Divide it. Power to a power means we multiply. I know. I think somebody was looking ahead, though. I just wanted that step. I think somebody was trying to put those 12s together. I'll do that next. So is it true that all of this will be added to this? Hello? Or do I need to show all those steps? Is it true, if I'm multiplying like bases, that this power adds up to this power. Yes? But I have to distribute this negative. Help me out. What's a negative 1 times 4x? Four four ne no. Four yeah, negative 4x no, minus, two. minus 2 has to be added to the, to the 12. this power. X squared, X squared. equals to two. all of this power. 2x plus 13. So I did two things at once. I did the power to a power by multiplying. That happened right here. And then I brought down the uh, x squared, which was just right here. So now, again, bad news. I see, I see x's and I see x squares. I need to get everything on one side. This negative one, what? What, that's a three? That's a three right here? Then that should be a minus three. Who caught that? Nice job. I will. I'm not, his, his volunteer points. Last name? Say it again. Aldo? Volunteer one. You get one. All right, so let's see. Can anything combine on this side? Can anything go together right now? No. So I got to move these things over. Can I do what Ryan did before? Ryan did something like this. Subtract 2x. Subtract 2x. Subtract the 13. Subtract the 13. Gone, gone. No? No, 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 no. You add the three. You do plus three, and then you do plus three on the other side. No, I need everything on one side. Because I just showed you in yellow. I'll do it in red. There are X's, and there are X squares. We need, it's just, it's, it's like, yeah, it's like this right here. Where did I do it at? I got you, I got you, I got you. I did it somewhere. I got you, sir. Okay. Where did I write it at? Oh, right here. I wrote it right here. You have to get your quadratic on one side so that I can factor it. Okay. All right. Back, back to business. So what is a negative 4x minus the 2x? What is a negative 3 minus 13? And then the plus x squared was just an innocent bystander, all equal to zero? Who's not comfortable with the order of these? I, look at guys, up here, it's clearly obvious you should have the AX squared first, the BX second, and then the C. It makes it too hard to factor if you switch them around. So the laws of polynomials are you always put the highest power first. So we should write this as X squared then the minus 6x, because that has an exponent of a 1. So that goes next. 
And then the minus 16 doesn't have an x, so it goes last. That's the rule of polynomials. You always write your polynomial from the highest power on down. Not only that, it makes it easy to factor. This has to be an x. This has to be an x because there's a 1 right here. If there's not a 1 here, it's harder to factor, okay? So I need two numbers that multiply to be a negative 16, but add to a negative 6. By the way, if they have to multiply to get negative, one number has to be positive, one has to be negative. Two and what? Two and eight? And you want the negative on the eight? Because the negative six demands that the bigger number, eight or the two, has to be negative, take the biggest one. So you put the eight there and the two here. Questions on this factoring? So what's my first answer? X is what? Well, yeah, is zero, right? So X is a negative two? No. I have to move it over. Remember, X plus two equals to zero. X minus eight equals to zero. So I have to add minus two both sides. I get this. This, I add 8 to both sides, I get x equals to 8. It's always the opposite when you set it equal to 0. All right. Put it on an extra sheet of paper. Yes. I can. Okay. Since there's extra time, I have a choice. I could go and do another problem from the next page, or I can... Uh, Walk around the room, make sure you all did this. Uh, walk around the room. Walk around okay. The room. Nope. No phones till it's closer to the bell, and then I make sure that we all were on task. Yes, sir. You didn't finish this one. Get it off of Brian's. You copy yours? Well, that's it. Yes. Yes. You guys have been helping me all period. She's been helping me all the time. Yes, Ryan, you did good. If I don't mention Ryan, Nick, and say, good boy, Ryan. Damn. Damn. You a dog. You a dog. Sure, I'm not like that. Just a little fucking chip. I can't see it from here. You're that dude. You're that dude. Turn the light on, please. Oh, that's 
The bell ringer will be picked up on Friday. Um, you have to get done with the quiz. Okay? Never use your shampoo again, bro. Or their conditioner. Conditioner? Uh, for Old Spice? Oh, no. I think such a good They think everybody wants to smell like that. Why is it so big at the back? Hey, shut up. Why are you on? Have a good one, guys. You did a good job. I wish. I wish Alexia would talk more. <laughs> Bye, sir. Bye.
Okay, now that we've solved some exponential functions, let's solve some logarithmic equations. That's what I meant about the exponential. They were equations because there was an equal sign. and Sometimes you had something uh, on both sides of the equal sign. Sometimes you just had zero. This, we're going to do a set where we want to take a, like this particular problem here. Look at, there's two different logs here. So the best bet is to condense the logarithms. Try to create, using your properties of logarithms, and create one log equation. That way, once you come up with both sides, a log on each side, and we say the log base b of x is equal to log base b of y, then we know since log base b is the same on both, that x has to be equal to y. So that'll give us an equation that we'll solve for x. And in logarithms, there are instances where our equation has extraneous solutions. In other words, the math says there are two answers, but if one of your answers get plugged in, and you end up having something like uh, log base 7 of 0. And that's what happened once we plugged in our answer, that the insides became a 0. Or you could have had log base 5 of a negative number. Both of those instances mean whatever x we were plugging in is called extraneous because you can never take the log of a zero, and you can never take the log of a negative two. As you recall, the domain of log, the domain was always going to be, uh, x always had to be, uh, or the whole thing, if you just had log, if this was just log base five of x, then x had to be uh, greater than zero. But if it was log base 5 of x minus 5, then we know that x minus 5 has to be greater than 0. So in this case, x would have to be greater than 5. So any answer that was less than or equal to 5 would be extraneous if this was the situation that we had. All right, it makes more sense once you see it in action. For instance, we've already got two logs, and they're already condensed on each side, and they are the same base. So basically, that cancels out that, if you think about it. They're the same. So all you really have left is 7x minus 1 has to be equal to 5x plus 17. That's the one-to-one -one property. So by solving this, by subtracting 5x from both sides, I got 2x minus 1 is still equal to 17. Add 1, 2x has to be equal to 18. Divide both sides by 2, x has to be equal to 9. And what were we talking about? Making sure that 9 was valuable. So our check, just really quick, is go ahead and plug into here, into this piece, plug this 9 into this x, and plug this 9 into that x. And let's see what happens. I just can't have anything uh, equal or less than zero. So seven times nine minus one. Well, that definitely is, uh, what am I writing, 63? That's a 62. That's bigger than zero. So that works out good. Let me plug to the other side. Uh, five times nine plus the 17. Well, obviously that is bigger than zero. So let's check. There's no extraneous for that problem. It just takes a second to double check. All right, so now we've got log base E, both sides. It's already compressed. So that basically goes away. So you're only left with k squared minus 4k has to be equal to k plus the 14. This is a quadratic that has the k squared and it has a k. In this case, everything has to be put on one side to create a zero. If you didn't have the k, let's pretend that wasn't there. Then you could solve for k squared. You could say k squared equals to what? 
And then you could take the square root both sides plus or minus. But unfortunately, that's not what I have. I literally have a k squared and a k. So I need to get everything on one side. So I have k squared. If I subtract k from over here and subtract k here, that gives me a minus 5k. And now i got to bring the 14 over. Minus 14 is now equal to 0. The reason this has to be done is because we need to factor the f word for quadratics. And this one's easy because I just need two numbers that multiply to get a negative 14. So one has to be negative and one has to be positive. And since I add them up to get a negative, then I'm going to take the k. I'll make my 7 and a 2 will work. Minus 7, k plus 2. If you FOIL this out, k squared minus 7k plus 2k, it gives me a negative 5k. And then negative 7 times 2 is a negative 14. That meant k can be 7 and k can be a negative 2. And if you plug them in, 7 squared minus 4, that checks out fine. If I plug this one into the second one, k, 7, plus 14, that, that's fine. It checks out for both of those. Let's try the negative 2. When you square a negative 2, it becomes positive. And a negative 4 times a negative 2 becomes positive, so that one checks on that side. And then over here, negative 2 plus 14 is still positive. So both of those equations are fine. They're not extraneous. Most of the time, we forget to check. Okay, number three, finally. I have two logs on the left-hand side. I'm adding two separate logs. That means to turn that into one log, I'm having to do the product of the 4 and the c plus 3. You may as well distribute it right now. 4 times c is 4c. 4 times 3 is 12. Because I multiplied it in. I took a 4 times a c plus 3. That turned into this equals to the log base, not log base, still log base 10. Uh, I think they made a mistake because this has a base 6. I'm going to just say that they all probably has a base 6. They just have a typo. So we will assume it to be base 6. Base 6. Okay. I'm sure it was a typo. Well, since log base 6 is the same as log base 6, we can rest assured that 4c plus 2, 12, I'm sorry, has a 12, has to be equal to 8. That's just a linear equation. Just solve it. 4c must be equal to a negative 4. C must be equal to a negative 1. Now be careful. If I plug that negative 1 into that, that c, negative 1 plus 3, it's a positive 2. It's fine. That's the only place that has a variable. So that works out fine. OK, number 4 has, has properties you can do on both sides. This is a subtraction of two logs. That must mean if I take the log base 7, I should be able to make a quotient. w plus 6 over 5w minus 3 equals 2. And on this side, to compress this side, this one-third power moves up. So that becomes log base 7 of 8 to the one-third, which means cube root. Remember what cube root of 8 is? 2 times 2 times 2 is 8, therefore it's a 2. So I'm going to bring that down. That's it. That becomes a log base 7 of a 2. Okay. This one still stays log base 7 of this quotient. That doesn't go away. Sorry. But I know for a fact that that goes away and that goes away, leaving w plus 6 over 5w minus 3 has to be a 2. And just pretend that this is a 2 over 1. It's just called a proportion. So some of you learned it as a butterfly method, whereas this gets multiplied by this, and this gets multiplied by that. So w plus 6 must be equal to, let me distribute that 2 into each of these terms. 10w minus 6. Finish solving it. Just a linear equation. 
I'm going to subtract W here, subtract W here, it gives me 9W. Let me add 6 here, add 6 here, that gives me a 12. 12 is 9W. Therefore, W must be equal to 12 over 9. That reduces to 4 thirds. And let's see here. If I plug 4 thirds in to either of these, that stays positive. 4 thirds, that becomes 20 thirds, which is uh, bigger than a 3. So that's positive. So we're good. That answer works out well. 4 thirds is a perfectly good answer. And... Okay, uh, the only thing I can see that I could do is probably take care of this power up here. And then what happens is that cancels, that cancels, that leaves 4p plus 3 is. Now, do you remember what the one-half power means? It means the square root. So technically, I just have the square root of 16 of p to the 4. Just do the square root of each of these separately. 4p plus 3 is a 4p squared. Because p squared times p squared, p squared times p squared is p to the 4. Therefore, I can pull out a p squared. Oh, look at this. I have 4p's and I have 4p squares. This is called a, a quadratic equation. Everything has to be put on one side. So since I have 4p squared is positive, I'm going to move all of this over here. So I'm going to have 4p squared minus 4p minus 3 now equal to 0. And this might be a little harder to solve because you forgot how to factor. But the Cartwright method was 4 times a negative 3 is a negative 12. Factors of a negative 12 that might add up to a negative 4. Since that's negative, one has to be negative, one has to be positive. I'm going to go with a 6 and a 2. With a 6 being negative, because when you add those, I get a negative 4 right here. So when I add those, I get a negative 4. So it turns out to be 4p minus 6. 4p plus 2 is 0. Set them both equal to 0. 4p minus 6 is 0 then p must be 6 over 4, which is 3 halves. And then the plus 2 one gives me 4p equals negative 2, p equals a negative 1 half. And if I plug either of those in, I don't see any problem plugging them in. I will not get negative or positive, so they both checked out. I did it in my head. You don't always have to write it out. Just make sure you give some thought to it. Okay, this is the hardest one on the page. I'm going to see that 2 probably goes up here as a power. This 3 halves goes up here as a power. The LNs cancel out, so I have A plus 1 all squared. And then... Let me uh, you know what what I should have done now that I'm, I'm looking at the steps that are on this problem. Let me distribute that uh, I'm going to still put that two here. Let me let me distribute that three halves first. That's three halves ln of 80 minus 3 halves ln of 5. Now I will apply this to here and to here. And it's a little harder than it, the other one was. a plus 1 all squared is equal to 80 to the 3 halves power
Well, it's actually LN. Yeah, I didn't get rid of the LN yet of that. Let me put this LN back here. I didn't get rid of it yet. LN of 83 halves minus uh, LN of 5 to the 3 halves. And then this can turn into one log. LN of 80 over 5 both to the 3 halves power. That might make more sense. This was ln of a plus 1 squared. Now I can say the lns will cancel out. a plus 1 is still being squared here. I'm going to do 80 divided by 5 first. That's going to give me a 1, a 16 to the 3 halves power. You might be saying, why did I do that? Because 3 halves power, 16 to the 3 halves actually means the square root of 16, take that answer and then cube it. That's the square root right there, right here. And the square root of 16 is a 4. And 4 third to the third is 4 times 4 is 16. 16 times 4 is 64. So I have a plus 1 all squared equals to 64. And since this whole thing is being squared, if I square root both sides. So when you square root both sides, don't forget that you have a plus or minus of that answer. So the square root cancels out the squaring, leaving a plus 1 equals 2 plus or minus 8. Because 8 times 8 is 64. That means you have two answers. You have a, a is going to be an 8, positive 8, minus 1, which is 7. And you have a equals to a negative 8 minus 1, which is a negative 9. And I think we're okay, both of those numbers. When you plug it into this problem right here, even though you're plugging in a negative number, both of those, or one of those, one of those is negative, doesn't matter because you're squaring it. So you're okay. That's what this thing meant. It meant it was squaring that anyway. So you're good to go. Okay. That's a full page of solving some logarithmic equations. You never can stop to the beginning of this. And practice, practice problems and you'll get better. Bye. And there's just, you know, <laughs> what this one was, uh, they only have one log and it's just equal to a number. So that's what that says. The log was equal to a number. So it's worth looking at a couple. Again, condense the side that has the logarithm. Then rewrite the whole thing as exponential. Because it makes real sense. If you have a whole log equals to a number, then that's the exponent. So it makes sense to use it. And still check for extraneous. So in this case, these are actually easier than the other side was, to be totally frank with you. It's already condensed. So using exponential, that means 2 is the base. The exponent's a 7 equals to 3x minus 4. Well, solving that for x is very simple. I take the minus 4 and I add it to both sides. Then I divide by this 3. That's my x. That's a perfectly good answer. It's going to be a positive number, so it doesn't matter what you're putting in here. It's going to be a super huge positive number. I don't even care what the number really is. I mean, uh, 2 to the 7 is kind of big. 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64. 
that's 128 plus 4 all divided by 3, which is 132 divided by 3, which is 3 goes, that's 4. 44 equals to x. If you have to work it out. I, 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 if you stopped right here, I'd give you credit. You don't really have to know. As long as you know that number is huge enough that it's not going to give you a negative number in there. Let's do another one. This 2a is connected, so make sure you understand that the whole thing is being natural logged. So it's already basically... Uh, condensed. So the base is e. The 9's my exponent equals to 2a. Well, e to the 9, I don't know what that is. I am going to divide by 2, whatever that is, is a. I'm, I'm okay with that answer. It's a positive number. Uh, it's not going to affect anything negatively. So, And then we'll call one more for the road on this one. Uh, the only thing that is stopping me at number 9 is the log is not by itself. This log needs to be by itself. So let me add 5 to both sides, get rid of this right here, okay? So that turns into log base 6 of w plus 7 now is equal to a negative 3 plus is a 2. So here goes 6 to that exponent has to be w plus 7. 36 equals w plus 7. Take away 7, 29 equals to w. And yes, it plugs in perfectly. I will not get a 0 or a negative number in here. Okay, I think that's enough. Let's be just drop down to number 11, I guess, because there's, there's two logs on this side. So what do we do? We condense it to one log, and when it's addition, we condense it to a multiplication problem, okay? So it's going to be one log, base 4 of, you may as well multiply these two together with FOIL. 2v times 2v is 4v squared. Oh, and then... I notice this is positive and this is negative and the same thing. So what's going to happen is the outside is a negative 6V and the inside is a positive 6V. They cancel out. So I really only have a plus 3 times a negative minus 9. That's called a difference of two squares. Regardless, we'll, we'll see what happens right now. 4 is my base. 2 is my power. Must be equal to 4V squared minus 9. 16 equals to 4v squared minus 9. And since this quadratic only has a v squared, and there's no v in there, I can solve this for v squared and see what that is. So it means I will add 9, add 9, 25 equals 4v squared, divided by 4. 25 divided by 4 equals v squared. Okay, so now I will... Square root both sides, leaving it plus or minus. So my two answers are V equals to a plus or minus, a positive 5 halves, and a negative 5 halves. All right, I think that's enough for that. Let's see what else is here. And go back. Some homework problems. There is a, another kind of problem. If you look at that very carefully, we're just going to solve exponential with logs. And this occurs sometimes when the common base is not available. You can use exponential equations. They can be used to solve logarithms. Pretty much is what we had done before. But then you got to take the log on both sides. 
and possibly after that expand the logs if you need to and then check for your answers. So in this case, um, I, I'm going to be using a log. So I know the base was three, so I can say log base three of, of the 80. Because that answer has to be the exponent. The exponent is x. Well, this is kind of silly. I mean, <laughs> I'm, that is the answer. If you key that in, you'll get a decimal answer. I, I'm not going to do anything else silly. That's my answer. Some, I mean, it can't be 3 to the 4th is 81. So that's got to be less than 4. Your decimal will be 3 point something. I just don't want to, I don't really want to expand it. Uh, that's what they wanted me to do here, but that's the exact answer. I'm just going to leave it. This one here, basically, if I do logs, that's my exponent. So it's going to be log base E, there's my base, so that's just ln, of 140 is the x. Can we just agree that that is a perfect answer, even though I, the calculator answer would be some decimal? And that's all they're doing there. Day. I call this, and then there's, I'm just going to problems that you could be assigned, but.